AI hype has been quite real these days where some people say it's just a matter of time until all our jobs will be taken over by AI, while skeptics say AI is bloated and needs a market correction. Meanwhile, some AI experts have been signaling that current large language models could be approaching its limits. For example, Ilya Sutskever said that LLM scaling has plateaued and data is the fossil fuel of AI, essentially signaling that the current trajectory of how LLM scales is heading towards its limit. So which narrative is true? Are people just being overly optimistic about AI without grounding their optimism to anything substantial? Or are AI experts just too conservative in their projection on where AI will be? In order to analyze this further, let's segment the AI industry into two, the primary market and the secondary market. The primary market contains companies that are in the forefront of AI that actually innovate AI models. Companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, Gemini, XAI, Mistral, Quen, and Kimi, these are all examples of companies in the primary market that create, train, and deploy state-of-the-art AI models. The secondary market that takes these AI models and leverage them to create downstream applications like perplexity, Klein, Manus, Notion, where you essentially apply the models into domains like web searching, coding, deep research, productivity, and more. So let's start by analyzing the primary market and see whether we truly have AI bubble happening underneath. After OpenAI released ChatGPT to the public in November 2022, active users of ChatGPT grew to 100 million users in just two months. In comparison, Netflix took 18 years, Facebook took four and a half years, and Instagram took two and a half years. So as you can see, the speed of adoption from public became Became mainstream really fast. ChatGPT is now growing well past 700 million weekly active users, and OpenAI went from being valued at $20 billion in 2022 to $29 billion in 2023, $157 billion in 2024, and finally $300 billion in 2025. And year after year, people's expectation in AI grew as well. And we started to see two different trends. One trend that followed people's expectation on where AI will be, and the other trend where AI truly was after each model release made by OpenAI. For example, the GPT-4 model was released only four months after ChatGPT, and it was a huge success that went above public's expectation. And every model released after that bounced above and beyond the backdrop of the public's expectation for models like GPT-4 in 2023, 01 and GPT-40 in 2024, GPT-4.1 in 2025, as well as GPT-5. So when we are talking about AI hype in the context of AI innovation, we are actually referring to this negative gap between people's euphoric expectation for versus reality of the AI capabilities. Most notable divergence in AI hype happened in August 2025 when OpenAI released GPT-5 and it was rather underwhelming. While GPT-5 certainly did improve in quality over time, from my personal experience, the underwhelming release of GPT-5 certainly left an impression on people's minds that maybe we truly are heading towards a ceiling in LLM innovation. So the natural question to ask here is, are we in a bubble when it comes to LLM innovation? In order to measure where we are in the hype cycle, we can look at what factors led to the successes in the past models from OpenAI. In other words, what factors led us to succeed in AI innovation in the past, and are those factors still in motion today? LLM innovation in the past five years was largely driven by four distinct factors. Size of the model, training data, compute, and training techniques. For example, comparing the GPT 3.5 model back in late 2022 to OpenAI's flagship models like GPT-5 we have now, we saw huge growth in size of the model, growth in training data, and and growth in compute. And this was largely driven by a study that was put forward by OpenAI in 2020 called Scaling Law. And it proposed that we can predictively seek improvements in performance if we scale the model size, training data, and compute. And a lot of early success in LLMs can be attributed to just simply making the models bigger, gathering more quality training data, and increasing compute. However, since GPT-4 in 2023, we have seen a slight different approach where the industry started to focus more on scaling more efficiently. And this idea can be trace back to Chinchilla's scaling law in 2022, which challenged that most LLMs were undertrained given its size, and training data needs to scale proportionally to the size of the model. So following the release of GPT-4, we have seen a higher focus on training data. And since we had huge funding from OpenAI's multi-billion valuation, the bottleneck wasn't on compute or model size since they could afford to spend more. But the true bottleneck in LLM innovation started to point towards training data. In December 2024, Ilya Sutskever, who's one of the most prominent 
dominant figures in AI famously said that internet data is a fossil fuel of AI, implying that we are essentially running out of novel data that we can use to train the model. And not only were we running out of data to train AI models, actually getting our hands on data became increasingly more difficult as people sued for ownership of data and lawsuits over rights and governance. And efforts have been made to create synthetic data from companies like Scale AI that played a huge part in collecting and labeling high quality data that can be used to train AI models. But AI has a lot of branches. Like LLMs are used for language tasks, but we also have vision models, robotics, speech, audio, video, and more. And synthetic data is certainly useful in training some domains like vision models for image generation and classification, but synthetic data alone doesn't add huge value in large language models since they rely on grounding in high quality human text to be more effective. So maybe LLMs really are approaching their limits and the gap between people's expectation and reality will truly reflect AI hype. But a close end antidote to the training data problem is training technique. In other words, even if we did max out on getting high quality training data, maybe we could come up with better training techniques or even better architecture that allows for more efficient learning even at a fixed training data. Simple analogy for this sentiment is this. Two different human beings can read the Bible and come to two different levels of understanding of it. So even though training data is fixed, Depending on how effective the model learns from the training data, their understanding will be different. And we have seen two major instances that support this, where breakthroughs in training technique result in massive leaps in AI innovation. The first example is when OpenAI introduced fine tuning on base models and used reinforcement learning as a training method that took the model beyond a simple pre-trained model. Another example is when reasoning models were introduced with chain of thought prompting paired with inference time compute that essentially allowed the model to mimic thinking. As you can see, advancements in training techniques have contributed to noticeable leaps in AI innovation in NLP tasks. So a critical question here is whether running out of data should induce panic in AI hype after all. But whether AI hype truly exists in the AI innovation side or not, there certainly seems to be indication in the capital allocation side of AI. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, recently and famously said that AI is in a bubble and a lot of people will lose a lot of money, signaling that maybe AI hype truly exists in how we allocate capital capital in AI companies. Microsoft, Google, Meta all pledged to spend 60 to $100 billion in AI data centers alone. OpenAI's joint venture with Oracle and SoftBank is expected to spend $500 billion in their Stargate facility in Texas. And OpenAI recently signed a $300 billion agreement with Oracle to purchase computing power for the next five years. And keep in mind that OpenAI's most recent valuation is $300 billion. So not only is Sam Altman saying that we are in an AI bubble, they are also spending $300 billion in the Oracle deal and much more in their Stargate facility. So a company that's valued at $300 billion is spending at an exorbitant rate by essentially giving away equity left and right that likely leads to share dilution and overinflated valuation. What's more concerning is that OpenAI's annual recurring revenue is $12 billion as of July 2025. With what money are they funding this crazy spending? Well, an answer is in shareholders' equity, which is an ironic statement given that Sam Altman is projecting that a lot of people will lose a lot of money, but maybe that statement is a self-fulfilling prophecy for their own shareholders. And here's another point that makes the situation worse. While $12 billion in revenue sounds great on paper, OpenAI is rumored to be losing money per API request, and their cash burn rate is also likely putting them in a huge red. While not on the same extent as OpenAI, other AI companies also have similar sentiment. Scale AI is valued at $29 billion with $1.5 billion annual recurring revenue. XAI is valued at $75 billion, while they're believed to be losing $1 billion each each month, Anthropic is valued at $61 billion with $5 billion ARR. Meta and Google are a bit harder to estimate since they are not primarily an AI company, but rather part of a trillion dollar companies that invest tens of billions of dollars annually to compete in the primary market. But here's where things start to compound even more. AI companies are also spending huge premiums to pay for the best talent in AI. And this led to a huge AI talent war that ends up costing the companies hundreds of million dollars being offered as signing bonuses. Most Notably, we have Matt and Alexander both offered a $100 million contract from Meta to join their company. And hiring the right talent can certainly cost a lot of time and hassle, which is why I wanted to do a 30 second description of Woven who's sponsoring this video. I've been looking to hire a software developer in my previous company. And one thing I always found was that candidates always had different skill sets. And some people were really good at code reviews and others were good at system debugging. And now with AI, agentic programming. So coming up with coding evaluation
evaluations for each role took a lot of time and effort to build scenarios and give feedback. It just wasn't fun for everyone involved in the process. Woven is a human-powered technical assessment tool that makes hiring streamlined. So if you're looking to hire engineers, Woven is offering 14 days free trial with 20% off of your first hire. Check the link in the description. So we're not only seeing complete inflation in multi-billion dollar valuation of companies in the primary market, they're also spending billions of dollars building out infrastructures to support their growth, also spending hundreds of million dollars in hiring top AI talent. Surely this confirms that we are in an AI bubble, right? The situation looks worse when we factor in mergers and acquisition and how much we're spending on acquiring other AI companies. Let's do a case study from Anthropic, which is a direct competitor to OpenAI. Their annual recurring revenue has recently ballooned from $1 billion to $5 billion. So how was Anthropic exactly able to grow this fast in their revenue? The answer is in the secondary market. And for Anthropic, it was cloud code. Meaning, while the primary market is certainly a rough spot to be in when it comes to profitability and revenue, the true potential in unlocking revenue is in the secondary market. The secondary market is where we have AI models applied to specific use cases. So think of applications like ChatGPT for regular chat, Perplexity for AI search engine, Klein and Cloud Code for coding agent, Manus for deep research, Notebook LM for productivity, and the list goes on. And essentially, the trick here is to use the underlying model that's upstream in the primary market to encapsulate the model to an agent downstream in the secondary market and reach a wider user base that exists in the secondary market. This certainly could be one of the fastest ways to avoid AI bubble in the primary market. For this very reason, a lot of companies in the primary market are now trying to reach the secondary market to be vertically integrated by offering platforms that people can use directly. And one of the fastest ways to reach the secondary market is through acquiring companies that are competing in the secondary market. But the problem isn't exactly solved here because there's hype in the secondary market and this leads to hefty premiums in valuation in acquiring AI companies as well. Cursor has a valuation of nearly $10 billion, Windserve valued at $3 billion, Notion valued at $10 billion. So as you can see, reaching the secondary market has a huge premium to pay, which which exacerbates the issue on the capital side. And like all things, when the music stops, the balance sheet need to make sense. But for now, optimism in AI is still the prevailing force, especially considering domains outside of LLMs when we look at vision models for image generation, video generation for VO3, world models and Genie, and newer innovations that are being discovered that fuels public's excitement in what the future holds for AI. But valuation and capital behind AI is still causing a lot of skepticism on the other side. And this kind of tug of war between optimism and skepticism in AI is not something new in the AI industry. For example, back in 1973, an assessment called the Light Hill Report was submitted to UK government about the AI industry. And the report suggested that AI is not worthwhile because it's just not as good as what people expected and was promised, and innovation in AI is too slow and we should question the validity of the entire field. And other skepticisms along the way have led the AI industry into what's called AI winters twice in the past. And even after surviving two AI winters, it still faces skepticism on varying levels, but AI hype that we experience today is vastly different from what we experienced in the past. While one might credibly argue that we are yet again reaching another AI winter when it comes to AI innovation, we are certainly in an uncharted territory when it comes to overinflated valuation of AI companies. That's not to say spending billions of dollars on AI innovation is inherently bad, but the true question is capital allocation. Are we allocating our capitals efficiently, meaning how long will it take for shareholders to eventually get their return on investment to make their investment worthwhile in AI.